So as it turns out, layout doesn't have to be difficult. In this video, I'm gonna share 10 game-changing tips that took my designs from being a junior to not knowing anything, all the way to being a pro designer, being able to charge thousands of dollars for a single website. This is especially true when you take into account the last few tips, so let's just get into it. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering these 10 tips while going over these three different sites, and I'm also gonna be showing you this one website that I created specifically for this tutorial, so let's just dive right in. So the first one is gonna be embracing the white space. Now, a lot of beginner designers wanna just cram everything into a design and just kinda of shove everything in there and not worry about the next section because they're scared that people might not wanna scroll all the way down, so they just want to shove everything as soon as, as people get there. But if you notice with all of these sites, maybe this one is an exception that's great for this video, is that we can see that there's a lot of white space and dead space being used here. Between these two sections here, there is a ton of white space. If we go into the inspect element here, we can see that this section alone has over 200 pixels in margin. So space between each section is super, super important. Having that white space is critical to ensuring that your design doesn't feel too cluttered and all of the content can be easy easily readable. Now, using a grid is super, super important in web design and not in the way that a lot of people talk about where if your design isn't in a grid, then it doesn't look good. You know, if it's not 12 pixels here or there, that, that's, that's nonsense, honestly. But what I'm talking about, the importance of using a grid is simply this. Now, this is a design that I've quickly come up with in Figma to show you guys this, but this is all I talk about when I say that using a grid is important. Now, if we go ahead and scroll through this entire site here, even if I zoom out here, we'll see that this landing page, all of the design, at least the design of the these two sections, these three, four, four sections, including the nav bar and the banner here, well, except for the banner, all the content fits in the same two columns. Now this is super, super important. Why is that? We always want our designs to be able to fit within the same margin and padding on our site. This is because visually it gets distracting if all the content is everywhere and it doesn't really make sense in terms of hierarchy when all the design doesn't necessarily fit within the same narrow margin here. Now, if I go ahead and remove the layout grid here, we'll see that even though there is no layout grid, things just feel smoother when all of the content fits into the same margins and columns here. All of these columns are the exact same size and it's super, super important to get that right when you're creating a site. Now, notice that the size of the images are changing, you know, that they're different sizes, different heights, but the width has to be the same so that it feels like a consistent site. Consistency is huge when it comes to web design and layouts. Now, there's a ton of more information to learn about grids, so I recommend that you go ahead and check out a specific video about grids and Figma to learn more about that, but this is just an overview of why it's important to use grids for your beginner layouts. Now, responsive design is something that a lot of people talk about and it's kind of just thrown around here and there, but responsive design is honestly one of the most important things when it comes to layout design and keeping that in mind when you're creating sites for your clients. So all three of these sites took that responsiveness responsibility in three different ways. So let's go ahead and shrink this size here and we've got my Figma in the back, so don't mind that. But this is essentially the three different sites that we've been seeing here and all three of them work in a different manner. Now, as I get smaller here in the formcarry.com site, we'll see that the hero image completely disappears from the tablet view or even into mobile and horizontal mobile. All of this is completely disappeared. So it's important to note that when you're creating designs for mobile, you don't always need to shove all the information you have on desktop directly onto the mobile versions. And this also goes through all the different images that they've been using on the site. Now they're still showcasing information and they still do have images obviously, but they're doing it with the conscious that it's now on a different breakpoint. So it's important to notice that all the information that you're gonna wanna put on desktop won't always carry over to the different breakpoints. Going back to my Figma design here, the next one's gonna be prioritizing visual hierarchy. So if you notice here, there are two or three main colors here, right? There's the obvious black, there's gonna be this kind of background beige, and then the reddish, pinkish kind of color that we've got going on here. All of this is on purpose. And I wanna take a look here because not only is color super important for hierarchy, but typography size is also critical. So typography size in this case is going to be one of the most important ones here. So typography here, we have our H1 and it's usually 56 pixels. That's just the HTML size that I like to use for my H1s. And then we have our paragraph here, which is going to be 16 pixels. So our H2s, our H3s, our H4s, all of our typography sizes and classes need to be properly formatted so that when you can scale it down, all the hierarchy makes sense. You want to have the most important information, obviously as the largest and the least important information getting smaller and smaller. Again, I recommend that you guys check out a more in-depth video on hierarchy, but that is the basics of hierarchy and why it's important for your designs to make sense when you get to desktop view, mobile view, tablet view, all of that typography and color is gonna be one of the main components. Now, keeping it simple and being minimalistic might be one of the most overused terms in web design history, but it's also one of the most important ones. Decluttering
cluttering your whole site, getting rid of things that aren't absolutely necessary and keeping your typography scale super simple. So from your body paragraph all the way to the H1, that's gonna be critical in having a very nice looking site. It's gonna be a boring tip, one that may not be super, super interesting, but it's gonna be critical for you guys to design good looking sites. Now, number six, I've already talked about a little bit, but using consistent typography throughout your whole site. Now, throughout this whole site, we only have inter as regular. If I go ahead and select the H1 here, we'll see that it's inter regular 56. But as we go through maybe the body paragraph, we're still in regular. But then we, when we go to this highlighted text here, it's gonna be bold. Now, why is that? Now, usually the easiest way to design a site is gonna be only using one font and maybe using medium bold, semi bold to accentuate words that you want to show off. So for example, we're using it to make this tag stand out here, the welcome. We're also in reviews and plans, but everything else is in standard. This whole site is using one font and one font weight. Other than that, we have obviously the bold, which is gonna be the second font weight, but everything else is just standard inter nothing special. And that is what helps the site look very clean. Now these next two come hand in hand, but optimizing for accessibility and using consistent UI elements. So those elements need to be created with accessibility standards in mind. And also remember that when you are creating these elements, for example, this button here, this tag, I'm only using one button throughout this whole site. Obviously the text is gonna be different depending on the CTA that I want, but the button is gonna be exactly the same. And in this case, the accessibility, the contrast isn't gonna pass. So that's a super important thing to take into consideration here. So I'm going to use a plugin over here called contrast and I'm just going to run it and it's going to generate whether or not I'm passing or failing in the contrast ratio for this button. And as I start to change up the design here, let's go ahead and click into the right one here. So as I start to change up the design, we'll see that the text and the button are going to dictate whether or not it's going to be accessibly passing or not. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe change the color of the background here, maybe to a red, go here. And so we start to see that here, depending on the color that we choose, it's obviously gonna pass or fail on the contrast ratios. So this is something that you guys need to take into account and consideration when you're creating your sites, because this isn't a new thing anymore. It's something that is standard and needs to be created for every single site and needs to be taken into consideration every time that you're creating these UI elements, images, text, anything at all. This is super, super critical. Now, mobile first is another buzzword that gets thrown around a lot, but mobile first is gonna be something that's gonna help you create sites that look really great on mobile and can scale upwards to desktop. Instead of creating first in desktop and then scaling down to mobile, kind of not really wondering what it's gonna look like on mobile, you know, like, oh, I hope it looks great. You know, that's not necessarily how we're supposed to do things. Mobile first is essential where today the majority of websites are viewed through the phone rather than desktop. So always take that into consideration as well. Now, this last one is gonna be one of the most important ones that I could even imagine to talk about and that's gonna to be to always iterate and test your designs on every single breakpoint. Now, when you're creating something, for example, in Webflow or some sort of builder, you can easily test how it's gonna look like on the designer or in the preview. But it's also super important to go ahead and test that in the real world on a phone, on a tablet if you can, on a desktop, so multiple devices. And as you start to improve, you're gonna to start to see some things that aren't exactly consistent with the designer and with real life. So always, always, always try to check in every single possible breakpoint that you can before launching, before giving it to a client. That is something that they're going to be able to take apart and pick apart and you won't be able to do that. So always test and iterate for every single breakpoint that you can. So in conclusion, let's recap the 10 most important layout tips. Now I've got the list in front of me here, but number one here is going to be embracing the white space, being able to not shove everything into a super tight space. Number two, using a grid system, making sure that everything is aligned with margin and padding. Responsive designs are honestly essential. We've got prioritizing visual hierarchy. That's going to be with text, with colors, with images, things like that. Keeping it simple, minimalistic, is always encouraged, using consistent typography and optimizing for accessibility. Then we have maintaining the consistency in UI elements. And obviously that goes back to the accessibility. We've got design with a mobile first approach. And lastly, test and iterate, which is obviously fundamental to everything that we do here. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, I recommend you guys watch this video as well. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.